Eric Darling here with Darling Data, and uh, we are now in, the, in into the midst of the demos for everything you know about isolation levels is wrong. You may be wondering what this handsome ASCII art logo is doing on my screen over here. I didn't mean to highlight that. <laughs> it's completely useless to highlight that. Uh, but this is the logo for a comic book superhero called The Flash. And if you have seen any of the more recent Flash movies, you will understand that The Flash moves very quickly. The Flash moves at such great speeds that everything around the Flash seems to slow down to this infinitesimal crawl, right, where things just drag out forever and ever in the world around the Flash as the Flash moves very quickly through space and time to, make very, to, do, to do various good things, like, like take babies out of harm's way and like put them in the arms of their mother, or like, uh, like put a bad guy in front of something that's about to explode, or, or a bullet, or like smack a butt or like grab a Snapple bottle and take like a, a, a well-timed well, well -time product placement chug from it before moving on to do other cheeky and heroic things. That's what I need you to pretend I am doing because I only have two hands that move at normal speed. I cannot possibly at all under any circumstances move as fast as the flash and do things that give me the type of concurrency issues that you will see under different isolation levels. So I need you, I need you to pretend that I am the flash and that I move very quickly even though I am quite obviously not the Flash, and I do, I do not, I do not move that quickly. Between you and me, I don't, I don't do that. So, with that out of the way, let's look at our first, our first demo. And this demo will surprise a lot of people, and it surprises a lot of people because this is the read committed default pessimistic isolation level that every SQL Server database uses out of the box. People think that read committed is this wonderful snapshot point in time view of data, but it's not. There is no, the word snapshot is not in this version of read committed. So there is no snapshot. All this isolation level guarantees, aside from the fact that your queries will uh, block and get deadlocked and your, your, the, your users who are just trying to run selects will have a bad time, uh, is that the version of the data you read was committed when you ran it, okay? So let's start off by looking at this query. We're gonna look at the results and then we're gonna look at the query plan. This is going to run for about five seconds total. Might be a hair more or less, depending on what else my CPUs are, find themselves up to uh, while this thing runs, but that's not, really the, that's not really a big deal. The thing that I want you to see over here in the results is that all of the results have a post type ID of two in, when, when we read this data with things, move, with things on their own, okay? All of these post type IDs are two over here. Sorry, my, 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 uh, uh, my, my mirror finger game is not quite back back yet, but we're, we'll get there, don't worry. So all of these have a post type ID of two. If we look at the query plan, we're gonna break down the order that things happened in this query plan. So uh, just like any other query plan, the logic of the query flows from left to right, that's this end to this end up here, but the data in the query plan flows from this end to this end. So we start with actually that select top one subquery in here. You can tell because we have this top end sort in here and this is finding us the top one row by score, the highest scoring question in the post table. Uh, and then we have, uh, we can see the post type ID, post type ID two predicate here, right? And that's where we apply that predicate. And what I wanna be very clear about is this, this is not a query tuning session. Yes, there are ways that we could make this faster, but that's not, the point isn't that, that, that like any query tuning we could do. The point is, to show you what weird stuff that can happen under different isolation levels. Speeding queries up can absolutely help you avoid these types of problems. They can't help you avoid all of them, but they can certain, getting your queries to be as fast as possible can certainly help with these sort of concurrency sensitivity issues, but they can't fix everything. All right, so we find, all the, we find that highest scoring question and then we find all the related parent IDs when we seek back into the post table. And then over here in the key lookup, we will find all of the columns for all of the rows that we care about. That follows exactly what we did in the query. We select the top one, uh, the highest score in question. Now in the, uh, the post table in the Stack Overflow database, it is mostly questions and answers, right? So we have, we, in, this, in this section, we find the post type ID of two, that's, a, that's an answer. So we find the highest scoring answer, and then we use this parent ID column to find all of the related answers. So in the post table, what we have, when you have a parent ID, that means that your post is an answer to a question. 
the parent ID is the ID of the question that you answered, right? So when you submit an answer to a question, it inherits that parent ID. And that, that, that's, so that says this answer is owned by this post, okay? So but that's what we do in here. Now, we're going to do this under concurrency now. <clears throat> uh, I've got uh, a column over in this query, query helper window one. And just to get things set up a little bit, uh, we're going to come over here and I'm going to show you that in this, with this update, I am doing something a little sneaky. I am updating the very last row in the post table and add, I am adding one millisecond to the last activity date column. So I'm going to run this without committing it. Let's just make sure that everything is rolled back in here just in case. And we're going to begin this transaction. We are going to run this update. Now we're going to come back over here and we're going to start running this query. Now you, you might remember that in the, well, the first time I ran this query, it finished in about five seconds. Well, we're about 10 seconds in now and this thing is still running. This thing is still running because it's blocked. We can verify that if we look at SP who is active, we can see our select query running and being blocked by our update query. And we can see that the session ID 72 here is the session ID, is the session ID of the query over to the right a little bit that is doing that update. Okay, so this query is definitely blocked. While this query is blocked, waiting for that update to do something, to commit or roll back, we're gonna come over into this query helper two window and we are going to update the table and we are going to change the post type ID to one for all of the IDs that we returned to our results before. All right, I know, I, I know it's a bit sneaky, but stick with me. We're gonna do that and then we're going to roll this back. Okay, we're gonna say we changed our mind. We no longer need that update. We, 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 we don't care about this update anymore. Uh, just make sure that's, that's completely canceled. And then we're gonna come over here and what we're gonna see in the query results might be a little bit surprising. When we come back and look at what returns now, post type ID is this thing, all, the, all these things that are definitely questions, right? That, that had a post type ID of two when we ran this and it didn't get blocked and everything was clean, now have a post type ID of one. This might look like an incorrect results bug. This might look like, you know, you had some, like you, you have incorrect data in your table or your database or like SQL Server just messed up and did this awful thing to you. But this is just a weird concurrency phenomena that can happen under a pessim under read committed, the default pessimistic isolation level. This is quite surprising to a lot of people because they don't expect these sorts of changes to be able to occur between the time a query starts and finishes. But this can absolutely happen. So this is obviously not a very good scenario for uh, read committed. This is, read committed is not off to a very good start here. What we're gonna explore in further videos is how other isolation levels might change those results, how other isolation levels might give you more consistent results with what your query asked for initially, particularly the optimistic ones that actually have snapshot in the name. Uh, so that, that, that'll be next, okay? So we're gonna, we're, gonna we're gonna have some more fun after this one. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something and I hope you'll stick around for the rest of these videos where uh, we're going to pick apart isolation level malfeasance. All right. And uh, oh, we're, I, should, I, should, I should have said isolation level misinformation. In a sinister voice. You've been misinformed. Stuff. All right. Cool. Anyway, thank you for watching.